If you're looking for a job, or even if you're not, there are benefits to making good use of cyberspace to build a better resume. I sat down with our Nick Bontis to get up to speed. Now, Nick, these are tips that you teach your business students at the DeGroote School of Business, but they're tips for anyone when it comes to resumes, right? A lot of people believe they should only work on their resume when they're looking for a job. Well, mm -hmm. that's a fallacy, because even if you're in a job, you should always have your resume updated and edited. Mm -hmm. For example, you're working at a certain task in your current job. You know now exactly how to describe that job. So you can put that now on your resume that's sitting there on your PC, on your hard drive. Sometimes when people do their resumes after they've left a position, it's like, well, what did I really do? What did I accomplish? What did <laughs> it I was achieve? A blur. That's correct. So my advice always to everybody is to always have an updated live resume, whether you're in working in a job right now or whether you're unemployed right now. What are your three top tips? Three top tips. Tip number one achievement-oriented descriptions. What does that mean? It means that when you describe what you accomplished at your previous employer, you must use nice derivative words like modernized, maximized, minimized. These are the types of verbs that we're looking for with numbers if you can. For example, did you increase productivity? Did you decrease costs? And if you could assign numbers to those, even better. And the reason for that is because it shows the achievement that you performed on the job. And that's what a future employer wants to know. If you did that for your past employer, that means you're gonna do it again for your future employer. So it puts you with a nice check mark beside your name when you're being interviewed. Okay, now, go the ahead. The second tip, Two. of course, is interests. A lot of people drop that at the bottom of their resume. You know, the I interest, like sailing, hobbies. hobbies, fishing. That makes you a real person. You know, the fact that you like this recreational activity or you like reading those types of books. And the reason why the interest section is so important on your resume is because that's the hook that someone who might be interviewing you is going to start with. They're going to say, ah, oh, you like sailing. What type of sailboats do you like to sail? And that kind of gets the, the conversation going. And the third tip, I must say, is truthfulness. A lot of people kind of like to extend reality on their resume. You know, I maybe managed 15 people when I didn't really manage anybody, or that I accomplished this big project when it was really part of a team effort. It's very, very important to be realistic and truthful on a resume. And the reason is that all employers now typically do reference checks and background checks on new hires, and you don't want to be caught fibbing on your resume. So you've got all your achievements in place, your interests and your hobbies. It's very truthful. Yeah. What do you do with it now? Okay, so there's the internet. The internet's oh, yeah. a wonderful tool for advertising yourself. I mean, that's what the resume is. It's a t TV commercial for yourself. So we have websites like Workopolis.com and Monster.ca, two big Canadian employer websites, where you can upload your resume to these websites. And what they do is employers will log in and they'll use keywords. So for example, if you were a sales associate in a previous job, they'll search for sales associates and your resume will pop up. And so even if you're a passive looker for a job. In other words, you have a current job, you're not really looking, you're just passively looking. Isn't it wonderful when you're at work with your current employer and somebody might send you a message saying, hey, did you ever consider moving to this job or another opportunity? So it's a real cool way to actually keep yourself available in the marketplace by using those internet sites. And in the job market of today, where we'll ta we're told you'll only be somewhere for a few years at yeah. a time, that should be a constant focus to always have yourself out there. Yeah, it's very, very important because a lot of people wait until it's too late. They've lost a job or they were laid off and then they have to start this cycle from scratch. If you are already passively looking, or another piece of advice mm -hmm. is to engage the services of a search consultant or an executive search consultant, or an employment search consultant. A lot of these organizations do not charge you a penny to have your resume on file with them because they actually charge the employer to look for a job. So if you have your resume on file with somebody already, it's just a matter of a phone call saying, unfortunately, I got laid off. Can you now put a little bit more aggressive search into my file? One final thing, do you need to print them off anymore? Probably not. I mean, everybody's going electronic. A lot of the resumes that are uploaded now on these sites like Workopolis and Monster, they don't require printed copies. And if somebody is going to ask for your resume, chances are all you have to do is email it to them. Excellent. Great tips, Nick. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay.